34 with you, please. Amen. But I'm glad I'm saved. Amen. I had a Methodist church down in Golden Valley to come up to Deacon and his wife one night and asked me if they'd uh, get rid of the preacher and was talking about that we his brother, my brother-in-law. And he said, you get, get rid of him when you take the church. And I said, no, you better keep what you got. You've got a good preacher. Amen. We can help one another, Lance, but we don't have to go take over. Amen. 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 I'm praising God today over in St. John. You got your place? 19th chapter, verse 34. Amen. Amen. He said, but one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side and forthwith came there out blood and water. And he that saw it by record, and his record is true. And he knoweth that he saith true that you might believe. Amen. You know, Louise is mentioned here a while back when we watching the Good Christian program. And she said, you know, honey, she said, ain't that something? She said, all that bunch, part of them over there, and the part of them Jews, Gentiles, and all the different kind of brothers, him, there's always saying that Jesus Christ was, uh, in other words, of an unfit woman. He was born to a virgin. Amen. Amen. It wasn't nothing unfit about where he come from. Amen. And they all said he brought the day to this and day to that. And I ain't never found the word of God last nowhere where Jesus ever even asked a woman to go out. Amen. Wow. Amen. Amen. And I want to tell you something else about Jesus I like. Well, he got away from mom and daddy, the earthly mom and daddy. And they were trying to find him, and they found him over in the synagogue. Asked the nature of questions that the lawyers couldn't answer. You know what I like about it? If you raise your young and right, you don't have to worry about finding over here in the house and smoking pot. Woo. You don't have to find it over yonder. Some of us, like that little boy, I thought I could just close my eyes and see him this morning. He's seven year old. And his eyes just sparkled. And he was scared to death. And he said, Hey, barefooted and the cold as it was. He said, I don't want to go back home. Hey, something wrong when they don't want to go back home. Amen. I always had trouble of him and wanted to go with me. <laughs> Amen. Why? Because love goes a long way. Amen. You can whip a young man and he'll in love. Not in not just feet like a dog. I ain't talking about that. And a man don't smack his wife around if he loves her. And she don't bail her him if she loves him. Jesus come that we all would have life and have more abundantly. And he give his life, Brother Stephen, that we could have life after this. And I'm going to tell you something. We're there in the land today where it ain't going to be long till we're gone to that city. Thank God. Here's a fellow there talking about sent this one fellow. Said he went and uh, met St. Peter at the gate and said he had a hunk of gold in his hand. He said, well, Peter, what was well, some way you doing that? He said, well, the streets of glory, though, has paid the gold. He said, well, he said, might need some passion done. He said, and what God does, it don't need no patchwork. <laughs> Amen. The Bible says, For these things were done that the Scripture should be fulfilled. A bone of him shall not be broken. I'm talking about the one hung on Calvary. And I'm talking about the one hung on the cross that the song we sing says the ground's level at the foot of the cross. No man stand higher than I. We're all in the same category, going to the same heaven. Going, Brother Tim, we're not going to be. I tell him, Brother Tim, coming out there. I said, one of day, God's going to give me a new set of legs, amen, and a new body. Amen. Well, I preach to you, reckon. Oh, I don't reckon. I know it. Amen, amen. amen. I don't know what they had to tell in Florida about sending my sister in here, but I got a phone call this week, last Thursday, and said, I'm uh, looking for a Howard Michaels, a preacher. I said, yes, you got him. Well, we're headed to the post office now to send this, and said, uh, you was her pastor. I said, well, I'm her brother. 
He said, oh, I thought they said as the preacher. I said, I am a preacher, but I'm still her brother. Send her on. Amen. Might not get in the ground, but she might come out in the living room when Jesus comes. That'd be fine. Amen. Why are you scared? Uh, you know what Brother Arnold does to me? People scare the ashes. My, my daughter-in-law uh, had to sleep in her mother's, grandma's old house for some time while they finished their house. And grandma's ashes roots were sitting in there in the jar. And she didn't know it. But she found out about it. She wouldn't sleep no more. Well, what is that going to hurt you? Come on now, amen. Because I'm going to stay, might be staying out here maybe Easter morning. And all the graves burst open and all them is the saved and born again. Come out, men, Miss Sherry, and all them people have been acquainted with out there. Get a hold of one of those hands and go. Amen. <laughs> amen. I'm talking about this God, this Jesus. Amen. And he hung on the cross. You know how come it wasn't no bones to be broken? Had the spirit been broken. Amen. Amen. They wasn't there bone in his body. Drove. You ever think about a perfect drive of a spike? Crossed his feet and put a spike through there and never broke a bone? Amen. You think the bones in your hand drove spikes through his hand and not a bone was broken? Amen. Thank God because he wasn't hanging there just to be a doing it. He was hanging there just for me and you. That we could praise him. Amen. One day. Amen. Glory to God, that's enough to make anybody want to shout. Amen. Amen. He thought, yeah, you're well, I don't want to uh, get too emotional. Somebody might get their feelings hurt. If you get your feelings hurt because somebody gets emotional in here, ain't enough emotion in this church. Man, I'm talking about spiritual emotion. I ain't talking about sitting there looking at me and smiling. Wow. I'm talking about using that spirit inside that. Praise God, Brother Robbie. That's not just your eyes that smile, yes, but that soul is elicited from the glory of God. Amen. Amen. What do you say now? And verse 37. And again, another scripture says, They shall look upon him whom they pierced. They did, didn't they? Looked on him. Now, don't you listen to me. Ain't nary one in here today that's ever been through, never seen such horrible execution in your life like Jesus did. Amen. He hung there and took it off because he said, I give my life that you might have life. He said, I'm dying here that you can live. Glory to God, amen. That's enough to make Jimmy an Indian do the war hoop, amen. Amen. Now you talking about ain't nothing wrong with it. I was telling Louise yesterday, I said, well, this kind of weather keeps up on Jimmy and they're going back to her kids. She said, yeah, and a fish. And I said, well, he loves to pull for fish. Amen. He ain't bothering nobody but the fish. <laughs> he, he ain't bothering nobody. I've seen him up there one day and have one about that long. Big old thing in the plastic bag and what it looked like what he said make them. Amen. And God provided the fish for Jimmy to catch. Amen. Amen. A lot of people say, oh boy, you're all mixed up. No, that truck they pulled out of Lake James the other day up young. 98. Didn't have it a few miles on it. Stole down here below Grand Falls. When it was brand new, it was that believe Jimmy where it was at, believe that's where it was stolen. And they run it in the late Jimmy, been up there 12, 13 years. And the boy that pulled it out with a record, he said they opened the door, there's hundreds of fish at home run out of it. God had them fish in hiding place and they messed it up. And after this, Joseph, how do you pronounce that word? Thank you. Being a disciple of Jesus, brother, ask me, you disciple of Jesus, ain't you? You folks are disciple of Jesus. You don't. You're disciple of the devil. Amen. <laughs> oh Lord, you know what? This is a good crowd this morning. I'd like to see twice this much, but whatever God sends, we'll take. <laughs> Secretly, for fear of the Jews, besought Pilate that he might take away. The body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him leave. He came therefore and took the body of Jesus. Amen. Took the body of Jesus. I want to tell you something. A 
about this. He couldn't take him. He took him and put it. Let's me read that. And there came also Nicodemus. Now you know what? Nicodemus speaks in another part of the Bible. And Nicodemus is smart. Nicodemus didn't know how to be born again. Nicodemus thought. But you know Nicodemus had to carry Jesus. And Nicodemus had a part to do with him. Amen. So don't condemn the man because a lot of us, some at one time or another, didn't want to know how to be born again. Amen. We wanted to do our thing. Brother, I tell you right now on Nicodemus, I came on some Nicodemus, which is the first came to Jesus for night, brought a mixture of Mars and aloes, about a hundred pound weight. Whoo! Boy, he met the he met the security, didn't he? Amen. And then took the body of Jesus and wound it into linen cloths with the pieces, spices, thank you, as the manner of the Jews in Samaria. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a sepulcher, wherein was never man yet laid. There laid they Jesus, therefore, because the Jews preparation of the day for the sucker was nigh at hand. Now I'll tell you something. Now, I don't know how much you've read the Bible and how much you know about it, and I ain't the smartest ever been. But I know one thing when they buried him, they had three days there wasn't nobody going there and get him because he wasn't in there. Preacher, what are you talking about? He went into the heart of the air for three days and nights. And if I read that right, Lance, he preached to everybody before him that he died, given the opportunity to come out with him. That's the way I look at it. He gave them all of that chance, Brother Tim, that if they would, and all that belief came out. Ain't that something to be in a place where you know it's going to be torment forever, Jimmy, and still not believe it? That's, that somebody needs to be brought. Amen. I'm talking about to have change. They're talking face to face with the Son of God who was standing before him and died on Calvary and went down to talk to him and say, you can go with him if you'd like to. Amen. That's the way I look at it. Everybody else look at it the way you want to. Amen. But I'll tell you right now, somebody come and give me an opportunity. Brother, to get out of a mess that I was in. I take it. Amen. 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 Let me just show you what I'm talking about. When my granddaughter one time had to go to Lenore in jail over there to be tried for just trespassing, nothing surely so bad. I said, now Melissa, don't you get in here and run in that mouth like you do so they'll put you in there. Oh, Paul, I said, go ahead and run it because I was standing, uh, standing there. So this boy walked up and the woman that had him charged like he charged Jesus. Well, I want to know, he said, if he wasn't back at 12 o'clock, he's going to fire him at 11.30 then. The judge said, well, she ain't been here three times. We can solve that. We'll dismiss the case and let you go on. That's why Jesus does us. We'll dismiss the case, brother, last again, you let the devil forget you go on and live for me. Amen. That boy cussed that a big cuss word. Where's she at? I want to see her. She's the one who took the papers. Do what, young man? Not over such a guy that'll take you five hundred dollars. And I stand the deputy beside him and put a cuss on you. You go to jail for ten days. You won't be going back to work today. Amen. I said, punch my lip. I said, now get up there and run your mouth. And she got up there and stood there and scared to even move. But you ever think about that's the way it's going to be at the judgment? People's going to run them out. Well, I done that to Jim Carrick over here. I know them a long time. What did the Bible say? I was naked and you wouldn't clothe me. I was hungry and you wouldn't feed me. Am I still writing Matthew's 